Well, so what I have here is graphing an equation, a quadratic equation that's in the form of y equals ax squared plus c. So when we have a quadratic that's in this format, there's a couple things that we need to understand. One, our vertex is now going to be changed. So originally, when it was just in y equals ax squared, we know our vertex was always at 0, 0. Um, and the axis of symmetry was always at x equals 0. Well, in this case, now our vertex is going to change as long as we have a value for c. And, but our axis of symmetry is still going to remain the same. And that's very important, because when we're going to create our table of values, we're going to want to make sure we always start at 0, and then choose two points to the left, and then two points to the right. So when graphing a quadratic, again, we have our, ac our y-axis and then our x-axis. And remember, a parabola, which is the shape of the graph that a quadratic makes, is a set of points that's, x that's created by an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So what we're going to do is we're going to, again, start at our axis symmetry. So the axis symmetry, the, the line that is going to split our quadratic, that's going to be equal on both sides, is, is at 0. So we need to kind of start with that understanding that that's going to be our axis symmetry. So we'll start with the first coordinate is going to be x. And then what we need to do is choose two points to the left and two points to the right. Now, once you have your axis symmetry, again, it does not matter what points you want to pick. You just need to make sure you pick at least two points to the left and at least two points to the right. So to make this simple, I'm just going to kind of pick my points negative 1 and negative 2, positive 1 and positive 2. So then again, now what we need to do is evaluate. So I pick these x coordinates, which is going to be at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. But now, remember, a parabola is a set of x coordinate and y coordinate. Every point has two coordinates to it, an x and a y coordinate. So therefore, if I'm saying, well, here's the x coordinate, then what is the y coordinate? So to do that, I'm going to plug in my value in for x, my value in for x, and then solve for y. So I have y equals 2 times negative 2 squared plus 3, 2, 2, or y equals 2 times negative 1 squared plus 3, y equals 2 times 0 squared plus 3, y equals 2 times 1 squared plus 3, and then y equals 2 times 2 squared plus 3. Now it's important when doing this, we also need to make sure we follow our order of operations. Make sure we um, Square, then multiply, then add. So negative 2 squared is going to be a positive 4. Positive 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. Again, remember, make sure you follow the correct operation. Negative 1 squared is 2. two I'm sorry, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 0 squared is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 0 plus 3 is 3. Then we have 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. Again, we notice that we're just going to have this reflection going on. And 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to plot these points. Notice, remember I said the axis of symmetry as at 0, right? That's going to be our line that's going to create, that's going to separate our parabola into equal halves. So if I go over negative 2, I need to go up 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then I have negative 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I have 0, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then I have 1, 5, 1, up 5, and then 2, 11 again. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect our points. All right. And what we'll notice is, as I kind of mentioned before, our vertex is now changed. It is now shifted in the positive direction. Now, I'm not going to get kind of too crazy with you. Uh, we're not going to get too far into this. But one thing to notice is notice my A. When A was positive, my graph is opening up, right? Um, also notice that when C is positive, my graph is now shifting up. Just kind of watch it, OK? So when A is my positive, my graph is opening up. That means it's going up that far into infinity. And then the C is also changed to shift up. So that's going to be very important because when we want to take a look at our vertex, okay, the vertex is now the small or the sorry, not the smallest, um, the minimum or the maximum amount on our graph. Well, we don't have a maximum amount because this graph is going to keep on going up to infinity. But the minimum amount we can now say is the coordinate point zero comma three. All right. When we look at the axis of symmetry, the graph has the same axis of symmetry as it did before without a C. The only thing that happened is we moved it up 
and we kind of stretch or compress it a little bit, but the axis symmetry still is at the line x equals 0. And now we also have some new updates for x-intercepts and y-intercepts. All right. If you can see here, the graph does not intersect the x-axis at all. So we're going to get into this farther. I mean, later we're going to learn more about this. Uh, they're what we're going to call our, some uh, imaginary complex intercepts. But for right now, we can just say there, there are not any x-intercepts. And the y-intercept now crosses at the point 0, 3. So the y-intercept is exactly the same as the vertex. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an equation, quadratic equation, by using a table in the form of y equals ax squared plus c. Thanks.